Hey folks, if you're looking for a tabletop role-playing game that is a modern dark fantasy of like supernatural meets the chilling adventures of Sabrina, I think this review is for you. The folks over at Angry Hamster sent me the quick start rules for Witch Faded Souls 2nd Edition to check out and review. Now, I have not played the first edition, so I'm going to be focusing just on this uh, quick start rules for the 2nd edition. Uh, and if you're interested in finding out more about the 2nd edition, it's currently being kickstarted. If you're new here, hi, I'm Dawn. This is Rule for Initiative, where we make videos all about tabletop role playing games and our other geeky interests. So why don't you hit that subscribe button? button and you'll get uh, the videos in your subscription every week. Okay, let's dive back into this review. This game is a modern dark fantasy game where you play as a witch, an individual who has sold their soul to a demon for power. They're also uh, referred to as the Fated. It takes place in a world like ours, but there is a supernatural world hidden under the surface that most people are unaware of. So, um, as I said before, shows like Supernatural, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, um, maybe even Grimm, that kind of world. And I think also that kind of helps give you an idea of maybe the tone of this game. I also think this could potentially be a great way to introduce new players to what tabletop role playing games are, as it is fairly beginner friendly. It starts out like explaining what a tabletop role playing game is in this quick start guide. Although be aware it does deal with some darker themes, so I think it might be a good way to introduce adults to tabletop role playing games, but not necessarily kids. Before I get into talking about kind of the um, system, uh, I want to address the art, which does a great job of introducing the feel of the game. It has this dark, creepy vibe to it, but at the same time there's kind of a bit of a lightness to it. In the quick start there are kind of two main art styles, one that reminds me a bit of like tarot cards, um, I can see kind of a, maybe a little bit of that kind of witchy vibe to it, and then the other kind of is a much more traditional digital art look that is a little bit of uh, cartoony but it still has that like creepy aspect to it. And I don't say it mean like cartoony in a bad way at all. Now this game deals with some deep emotional stuff. You are trapped in a relationship with the demon you sold your soul to. It's very clearly like a bad, toxic, abusive relationship. There, It is not sugar-coated. It is not a thickly veiled algorithm. It's pretty straightforward. But at the same time, the game emphasizes that there should always be hope. Hope that one day you will break this deal and reclaim your soul. There's a variety of demons inspired by a number of creatures from folklore and traditions from a variety of cultures. The type of magic you cast is based on the demons. Now, magic is a side effect of the bargain. Um, it's also a bit tricky, and I'll get more into kind of how magic works a little bit later. And the rules emphasize there are many reasons why your character may choose to sell their soul. Um, and I will say that it doesn't come across as like you're playing an evil witch or uh, the idea that sometimes gets thrown around that like witches are evil. In fact, the opposite, I would say, because so much emphasis is placed on helping your fellow fated. So to help navigate this game and the themes safely, there is a unique set of safety tools included in the quick start. I like that it feels like it fits the game, making these unique hand shapes against your chest. But it also is something that I could see players maybe not remembering what the hand shapes are supposed to be, um, especially if they don't come up often, which hopefully you don't need uh, the safety tools often, but they are there in case. Um, and this is something that if I probably if I were to run this, I would use a um, a system that's a little bit easier to remember or have some kind of visual guide um, like somewhere on the table just to help remind my players what symbol that they need to make and then also for me so that I make sure that I'm interpreting what they are the safety tool they are using. When you get down to the mechanics of the game it uses a pool of dice for challenges and it's not the kind of game where you're going to be rolling for everything you do it's really only when there would be a consequence or a particular challenge to what you are attempting. I do find it a little interesting that the way you level up abilities is linked to failing a check. Um, the quick start doesn't go into a lot of detail about this as it's not relevant to the adventure, but I could see potential for this to become unbalanced or result in skills that um, perhaps I'm not as interested in 
having my character be strong at growing faster than the skills that I much would rather them actually be good at. Another interesting thing is the Game Master does not roll dice for the NPCs. Instead, they the NPCs have opposition ratings, strengths, flaws, and unique abilities, and the Game Master just kind of narrates what happens in response to what the players choose to do. For the Game Master, you're not going to be juggling a bunch of stats, but I could see a Game Master potentially abusing this as they could just kind of narrate whatever they want. Um, also, if you're a Game Master who likes to play the game as well as create the bones for your players to uh, explore, uh, you're not going to kind of get that aspect of it um, when you are running this. A big thanks to all of our patrons, especially Arby. If you want to support our channel, you can head on over to patreon.com slash roll for initiative and check out the perks of being a patron. Okay, let's find out more about this book. Okay, so let's talk about magic. Now, you're not going to be casting a ton of spells, rituals, using lots of potions in this system. Um, but one thing I do like is that your spells, rituals, and pot potions just work. You don't have to roll for them. It just happens. But magic's still a little bit tricky. You have um, what's called an eternity track, and if it reaches 10, bad, bad stuff happens. Uh, it, it, the rules make it pretty clear. You don't want this to happen. Your coven doesn't want this to happen. And the greater fated community wants to avoid this happening. So to cast a spell, you mark off the number of points, um, zero to two on the eternity track. There are cantrips you can cast without needing to mark this. And the only way to clear the Eternity Tract is by making another deal with your demon. So that is going to limit how often you are casting these spells. And because the uh, Quick Start Guide doesn't really get into a lot of detail about what a deal is or how you go about it, it provides like, here's the kind of level of deal um, that will clear points, but doesn't really provide a whole lot of examples. It's hard to judge from the quick start really how likely it is that you are going to be able to clear that eternity tracker. That's a little funky because for me, if I'm playing a, a witch, if I'm playing a magic caster, I want to be able to cast magic. Now, all of the characters in the Quick Start Guide have a cantrip. So there is at least one spell that you can cast however many times. It's not going to affect your eternity track. And um, it's. I wonder also if the bigger game will add more cantrips in, especially as you level up. But from the Quick Start, I don't know. This is also a game that is going to be a lot more focused on the roleplay aspect. While there can be combat in this game from the quick start and the included adventure, it's pretty clear that combat, um, it's not a combat heavy system. Um, and oftentimes you can overcome an obstacle without getting into a physical fight. In fact, I think that's kind of might be the more default and actually getting into combat is fairly rare. So with this, there is also no initiative. This feature I've seen in other games and can be great. I particularly like it in games that are a lot more roleplay focused, that are a lot more kind of um, descriptive, uh, focused on what you are doing, not how you're doing it. But I do think that this group needs to gel well and or have a very observant game master that can pull a shyer player into the action, make sure that somebody isn't always getting spoken over because there's not going to be those clear turns that everybody gets to act on. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of the adventure in case you're a player who's going to play in it. Um, but it, I will say that it does, the writing gives a great feel for the setting. There are seven pre-generated characters to choose from. Um, you can probably play through this entire adventure in one session to get a feel for the game. And then from there, you can go on and um, using the full rule set, create your own characters and story. So if this sounds like the game for you, head over to their Kickstarter. It's running now through November 21st, and that way you can back the full second edition or you can pick up the Quick Start rules available now at the link in the description. Have you picked up the Quick Start? What do you think of it? Did you play the first edition of this game? I'd love to hear your thoughts about it down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye. Can you fit there? Almost.
I need, I need, I, this cardigan needs pockets. Pockets. Pockets.